Hey, welcome to Australia Commentaries. Uh, we're talking about, which one is this? Charlie and the Chocolate Charlie. Factory, not Willy Wonka no. and the Chocolate Factory. No, this one's named after the Roald Dahl book, the, the 70s one, went their own way with it. That's right. They were like, heads. not about Charlie Bucket, Mm-mm. about Willy Wonka. Mm-hmm. He's this one's the, he's all about Charlie? Oh, good. It's, Fascinating character. A lot of levels. A lot going on there. A lot of levels to these. Roald Dahl, real deep. It wasn't just good people and evil people. Stop being such a BFG. Shades <laughs> of Grey. He was a big fan. You are just a giant peach today, aren't you? <laughs> uh, Another one where like, <laughs> the evil, wicked, satanic aunts and the kindly bugs. Uh, well, we like to get things be a little twisted here, so we're talking about the Tim Burton version, where it's a little spooky, a little a little messed up, you know. Only it's for, a little for some of you creepy goth kids out there. Um, so yeah, could have made it creepy. We're, we're, we're watching uh, we're watching Alice trailer for that. Talk about it. We are also uh, showing you some deleted scenes and answering any questions or comments you might have. Put those in the live chat, and we'll talk about it at the end, and we'll tease you with next week's Alice trailer. Um, Charlie and Chocolate Factory, uh, I saw this film, I think, in college or high school. It was of an age where I was was inebriated. That sucks. In (laughs) one or more forms when I saw it. And I remember being... Like I'm out when the uh, all the Oompa Loompas were CGI'd and and the same person doing Deep like Roy, a, a, Bollywood actor Deep Roy. Well, there you go. When when there were multiple Deep Roys like um, uh, doing like the the Watusi at me or whatever whatever their first you know, musical number was, it's like oh, okay, I can't take this. I can't take this. Deep Roy, a featured player in another movie we've done on Honest Trailers, he's in the '80s classic Never Ending Story. In yeah. the very beginning, he's like the little bug guy oh, that, that uh, yeah. they meet when they first get there, and they're like right. uh, with the the few other creepy little weird guys that I'll talk about the nothing for the first time. Yeah, Deep Roy's there. First creepy bug guy. Um, I don't know. He's like a bu- he's riding a bug. Maybe he's another like <laughs> tiny guy. You know. Well, in revisiting this film, since mm. my freak out, uh, I thought that it was a fine but inessential, dare I say, unnecessary redo. Um, I, yeah. I, I, I love the original. Um, I found that this one, in revisiting it, you know, uh, there were things that I liked. I, Tim Burton did put in a lot of cool physical sets. Um, I did not like the music. The Dan- I thought Danny Elfman did not not his best work. These, these feel pretty tossed off, yeah. Mr. Elfman. I'm a big fan of Danny Elfman in terms of the career. Yeah. These these are not. These are not Oingo Boingo level compositions. But there's just not much going on in this movie. Um, it's really just a, a, a series of unfortunate events. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think that I think you, you, we're, we're getting at the same thing, which is like Roald Dahl's story, and this isn't a knock on him. I, I do have lots of knocks on him, but not, not this one. It's just, it's very like, there's not that much wiggle room. It's like, it's very like structured and it's like, here's what happens. And these characters are not shades of gray. They're like types and they've got very specific personality traits, yeah, all fables. of them. Yeah. And so it's like, well, there's really not that much freedom. You can make it look weird and he does cool stuff with the sets and he's the designs and whatever, mm-hmm. but yeah, on a certain level, it's like, well, there's really not that much to do with Violet Beauregard, you know? Like, she wants to win a chewing competition, you know? Like, well, there it is, there it you is know? folks. And yeah, so I, I feel like you feel kind of penned in, and it feels like Burton and, and John August, the screenwriter, they're doing what they can, the dentist stuff, and like trying to trying to mix it up and make it their own as best they can, but you just, there's not that much you could do with this story. It's very, like... Yeah. Within a set group of parameters as a story. And Johnny Depp, uh, try, uh, whether he failed or not, in your opinion, certainly went for something. Went for something different. Something different from Gene Wilder. Yeah, it doesn't really play. I don't, I don't know. I don't know quite what it was. Like, I feel like Johnny Depp, sometimes his approach to characters is like this kind of amalgamation of like two or three weird quirks or impressions that he just kind of compresses. And sometimes it works. Like his Hunter Thompson in, in Fear and Loathing is like a bunch of crazy stuff uh, that yeah, he's put together. Um, Affect Jack Sparrow and, is a Keith Richards. Yeah, right. He's like <laughs> moving around and being weird. And that stuff works. And then this time it's like I, he's trying to do that again. It's like a little bit Michael Jackson and a little bit like a marionette puppet and... 
It just doesn't, I don't know what, it doesn't add up to that much. Yeah, he just seemed like an insane person. Rather than someone yeah. who was uh, mischievously toying with them, like where I think Gene Wilder was, like he was a little sardonic. He was kind of, he seemed like a puppet master, like kind of pulling the strings of everything. Giant Depp just seemed like a, like he'd lost his mind. Yeah. <laughs> Gene Wilder's Willy Wonka is much more charming and charismatic. You want to spend time with him. He seems like a fun guy, especially kids would love. Yeah. And yeah, they're all creeped out. Even the even the characters in the movie are all creeped out and reacting oddly to Johnny Depp. And they're you could like the kids are crestfallen when they meet him, and I feel like that emotion comes across to us, the viewer. Like <laughs> we're also like, oh, it's this. Oh, okay. Oh, he's a he's a child. He's an inmate running the asylum. Um, yeah. But, all right. Well, like it seems like Timo Timo T Timmy Tim is bringing more of like a spirit of fun and we'll see. Jury, I haven't seen that. Out, but... I haven't seen that movie, but he he does seem like he's trying to capture more of that. Like he's a likable. He's got a little weird twist to him, but he's a likable figure, not a creep. Yeah. Yeah. We are getting reports that Wonka is good. We'll see. We'll be the judge. I mean, the Paddington guy, Paul King, did it, yeah. which is like striking its favor. But wow, it did not look like it was going to be good to me nine months out. Seemed like, like a big mistake. Yeah. But, well, yeah. <laughs> I haven't been hopeful, but here's hoping. All right. Uh, here's hoping that we enjoy this honest trailer. Charlie and Chalk Factory. Hit it. From human theremin Tim Burton and the J.K. Rowling of his time comes the sort of goth treacle you get whenever Burton, Depp, and Helena Bonham Carter join forces. Wow, they're pale, even by British standards. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Pause. Um, I once went to a theremin concert. Mmm, yeah. Really limited range. Some might I say, mean, like, Tim Burton <laughs> it can only yeah. do so many things. It can go, Wee! and then it can go, Wee! I feel like it would be interesting. It would be really different if, the, like, to hear the theremin before horror movies and vintage mm. TV had really, like, captured it. Because now that's all that you can think of. It's an inherently spooky instrument because yeah. you're playing it just by the aura, just by the vibes alone. You yeah. kind of put your hands near it and you never touch it. Right. Like, I just feel like my brain immediately goes to, like, Ed Wood movies and it's hard to get out of that association. I think that some bands could maybe use it as a side instrument, like a ska mm. band with a theremin or maybe in an orchestra or something like that, but it's not built to stand alone. Well, it is, yeah, from a live performance because you're, like, kind of doing weird moves with it. So it would be cool for, like, a band to get in on that, I guess, yeah. Send us your favorite uh, theremin what pieces. Band should add a theremin? <laughs> what band should add a theremin? I don't, like well, the Rolling Stones, just put an old guy on a theremin in the back. <laughs> uh, let us know. All right, keep going. You know and love the original Willy Wonka, a whimsical fantasy about punishing children till only the pure remain, lightened by Gene Wilder's effortless charm and some unforgettable songs. Loompa, loompa, doopa, dee, dee. Their legs are weird cause he Can't broke their knees. But since the 70s version is close to perfect, all they could add was upsetting CGI and 20 minutes of orthodontic themed. Backstory. Please don't do this in the prequel. That'll be a huge waste of Timmy C's precious face. Pause. What? Um, that really did get me. That uh, that shot of him walking through the flag museum. Mm, yeah, I, I laughed. Funny. I That's laughed funny. out loud. Yeah. I thought it could use more jokes. There, there are a couple of decent bits. That, and like I said, you, you can feel them trying their best. Like this doesn't feel lazy and tossed off. Like yeah. that's. I think so many of these kinds of movies are just as like a cash grab. And like from Disney's perspective or Warner Brothers' perspective, sure, mm -hmm. but. You could feel Burton and August really doing their best to make it their own. Yeah. Some things are funny. It's just like, you know, what can you really do? It's yeah, funny. I appreciate that they they had a slant and yeah. they went for it. I also really like another good visual gag. Uh, in in another flashback, the kid leaves to go to go to the flag museum to go study uh, chocolate. Yeah. And then he comes home and his dad's like, I won't be here when you get back. And then he comes here and not only is the dad gone, but the entire animus building down, yeah. has been removed. Like it's just it's just absent. Yeah. He, like he picked up the house and left, which is <laughs> There's some Clever. good bits. Yeah, it's, a, it's was John it's August the one a... that did Chernobyl, or was that the other guy? No, no that's Craig, Craig Mazin. Craig, Craig Mazin. Yeah. Uh, John August, he has like a podcast Script about notes. Screen. Yeah. yeah, exactly. There you go. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've, I've fallen off, but once upon a time, I he wrote. To that. He wrote Big Fish. He, I mean, yeah. he did Miss Peregrine. He does a lot of Four the, Christmases. Yeah, a lot of the later, latter Burton stuff. They yeah. collaborate a lot. Yeah. Check that out. 
All right, keep going. Watch Johnny Depp take a swing at the iconic role of Wonka, a man struggling with a completely made-up profession, British dentist. No son of mine yeah. is going to be a chocolate. Growing up in the reverse bear trap from Saw led Wonka to start a candy company slash torture factory. Oh, pause. I do also really like that, that the, the guy playing the grandpa, they have him in flashbacks pretending to be a much younger man working for Wonka. Yeah. They didn't recast it or do anything. He's literally just an old guy. We're like, right away, sir. <laughs> well, that <laughs> did confuse me a little bit, or it raised questions about uh, Wonka's severance package or lack thereof, because oh, it made yeah. it seem like he got fired from that place a few years earlier and they're penniless. No, many years ago now, right? It would be decades. Wonka is eternal. He doesn't seem to age or whatever. Yeah, but it, I think that's supposed to be many years ago. The, 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 the Oompa Loompas have been running the factory for a long time. I think it's like less than 15. I think because hmm. the, the, his, it was, I think it was a, I saw a 15 year earlier Chiron yeah. when he was working there. So, oh, maybe. Uh, but also, Wonka, uh, not big into fair employment practices <laughs> at, at, at all. At all. And I, I was wondering if that was something that they were either leaning into or trying and failing to make a theme because they had. You know, the dad get put got put out of a job by mm -hmm. automation and stuff like that, and they they made a, a big mystery out of who was working there now and stuff like that. But no, Wonka's just they're just gonna keep going with the with the indentured Listen, servants. Listen, it's much cheaper, and there's less chance of people stealing your ideas. It's win win. Yeah, when they can't leave. Happy ending yeah. for everybody. Okay, right. <laughs> keep going. David Zaslav's like, what? That's a perfectly happy ending. <laughs> I don't understand what you're complaining and become an extremely awkward man-child. Good morning, Starshine. The Earth says hello. What was that? You know, kids yes, love... he may have the same talent, references. fame, look, and daddy issues of a late 90s Michael Jackson, but Depp claims that had zero influence on his performance. And to that, we say... Hee-hee! <laughs> 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 Meet the Bucket Family. <laughs> the whole part where he's chanting Mama Say Mama Sa Mama Kusa. Even though like keeping that. four pensioners locked up in bed should get them, what, 3,000 quid a month? There's Dad, who got screwed out of a job Pause. at the school. You know how they're broke is um, fingerless gloves. Mm. That's that's the universal cinematic symbol for can't afford anything is you had to sell the tips of the yeah, fingers off yeah. the knitted gloves. Well, that's like Burton keeps casting his wife as like a penniless cockney trollop like <laughs> yeah. movie and like this this and Sweeney Todd were like back to back and it's like well at least this lady's not cooking anybody in, in inside the of you there stew. are two Helen and Bottom Carters uh, one is an evil witch the other is a penniless cockney, penniless trollop. cockney <laughs> trollop the one that wins is the one and you feed what I we didn't I, I put this in my notes we didn't we didn't put it in the video his his previous uh, relationship before this was Lisa Marie, and he always cast her as like the beautiful, angelic, unapproachable. Like in Sleepy Hollow, she's yeah. like the witch, beautiful witch mother who was who was brutally murdered, and she's Vampirella in Ed Wood. And then he always cast Helena Bottom Carter as like the, the, just the words penniless Cockney trauma. Yeah, really she's roll like off the living tongue. in an alley behind a Victorian <laughs> tenement. Like every movie, come on. Awesome. All right. Keep, keep <laughs> she used going. to play an aristocrat and stuff, <laughs> Helena Bonham Carter. Factory. Helena Bonham Carter, who appears like Beetlejuice when you say Johnny Depp's name three times. Grandpa Joe, who's still a mooch, but in this version, Wonka can him with no severance. Did you get your job back? No. <laughs> so he should really be pissing in the chocolate instead of sucking up to him. And Charlie, a perfect little angel with zero personality. Glad he got to let loose later on, at least. I am <laughs> a surgeon. I am a surgeon. <laughs> Join Charlie on his tour of the chocolate factory what? alongside the human avatars of Gluttony. Avarice. Daddy, I want another pony. Pride. That kid, it's going to be me because I'm a winner. And Wrath. Die, die, die. Where Wonka shows them all the latest innovations in indentured servitude from his food handling rodents. So pause for that. One thing I appreciate is that he did train 40 squirrels. Mm. Uh, those are real stunt squirrels. Yeah. Um, that he actually trained. I guess do squirrels automatically know how to 
shell nuts. They know how to sit still, or don't know how to sit still. So he got them all to. Yeah, I. I mean, I. I guess the 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 nuts thing. They probably that's fairly intuitive. <laughs> squirrel. I bet they don't need much encouragement. Yeah, I feel like that they're gonna do on their own. It's yeah. just the it's just the remaining in place bit. Yeah. So I like that. I like that Tim Burton not famously like David Fincher exacting, but on very specific things. It's like, well, I, I I will need real squirrels. I, I'm gonna need. I'm I am gonna need real squirrels. squirrels. I mean, yeah. obviously, we can cut every other corner, but I'm gonna need these squirrels. I like uh, imagining how Us would be different, um, the Jordan Peele movie, mm-hmm. if the family instead tr- had a squirrel ranch with <laughs> 40, if, like a massive flock of squirrels. How would the the, conclu- the climax would be a lot less action heavy if it was He's just kind of surfing on like a yeah. wave of squirrels yeah. uh, away from it's it. Yeah. tougher. Yeah, well, let's get, we'll get our notes to it. Need, the jean jacket would need a lot more squirrels to be satiated. Key and Peel would have done that, but Jordan, (laughs) yeah, not so much. All right, keep going. That's why you need Keegan in (laughs) in that room. Keep going. To the indigenous tribe, he purchased while dressed like a British colonial officer. Don't worry, they like working around the clock for literal beans. (laughs) It's not like he treats them like actual (laughs) slaves. Well, it's not like he's doing potentially fatal experiments on that. I've tried it on like 20 Oompa Loompas, and each one ended up as a blueberry. <laughs> oh, boy. This isn't good, is it? Uh, Wankonda forever? Gasp, as it turns out, this Yikes. maniacal CEO has an ulterior motive. Damn. Wow, didn't see that coming. His actual plan? Find the right child to take over his all-consuming job. Either the one who's the most so, pure pause. of heart. Go, go back like five seconds and play it again. I can't tell if this is, well, we should ask Kevin, if this is part of the music track or if John's phone went off during recording. Oh. <laughs> so play this again. And who's the most pure of heart. I invited five children to the factory and the one who was the least. I guess I that's, that's the track. I invited five children to the factory and the one who was yeah, I think that's it's very the track. similar to the iPhone. I, I I hear now. I did not notice before now, but now that you said that, I do. It is like it is a little bit iPhone ringtone. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to talk to Kevin about that. I'm pretty sure I'm, he would notice if the phone went off. I'm like ninety percent. That's part of the audio bed and not John's phone going <laughs> off. But it, anything can happen. Anything folks. can Listen. happen. Little Easter eggs in um, the world of post production. Yeah, he'd hear that. Anyways, keep going. I think Kevin would have noticed most pure of heart i invited five children to the factory and the one who was the least yeah right. this is going the pause or the one who's the most obese this is going din 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 din, din and that's not a, yeah. a phone is din 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 is it i think i think it's a it's a slightly dun, different dun, dun, tempo dun, dun, dun. okay all right it's fine not it's, not quite my tempo <laughs> let's try it again let's yet. try it again <laughs> keep going and, and therefore easiest to groom same diff as Charlie wins a lifetime of work with a mercurial partner and his army of slaves. Of course Charlie takes the job. A child with options would never put up with this. If you hate gum so much, why do you make it? You really shouldn't mumble because it's kind of starting to bum me out. So strap in for a charming family film that doesn't really like children. I'm Alec Beauregard. I don't care. Overweight people. He who finds the first ticket will be fat, fat, fat. And foreigners. <laughs> Charming. But hey, wang doodles. That's a funny word, right? Horn swagglers and snoz wangers and those terrible wicked wang doodles. Hey, Danny Elfman, can you whimsy up some fun music real quick? It's getting kind of dark again. Ah! <laughs> Story. <laughs> yeah, pause. I think that that's a. I think the charm of the original is because there's like three or four great songs in it. Um, it's a musical. And yeah. This one, yeah. At least two. I mean, Candyman and Pure Imagination, both certified classics. Yeah. Just. And the Oompa Loompa song. I mean, yeah. it, you know, say what you will, but it's a, it's, it's, it's got staying power. Yeah. And then the, you can't have Johnny Depp singing in that voice. Or you, he could just go full Michael Jackson, I guess. They, like, like that, you said, yeah. Mama, 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 yeah, yeah. Throwing a little, little <laughs> like, Acha, ooh, but you can't have those. Uh, that, that like. Twee wine of his can't he couldn't no. sing pure imagination like sunrise no, <laughs> it'd be like a I, horror movie i mean usually johnny depp singing is not the right oh call. yeah he's got a band right he's got the, the hollywood the vampires Revolver, Hol- yes. yeah. uh, but i mean even in like sweeney todd it's like mm, mm. we could probably have done without this like does he have a song in chocolat 
He's like a riverboat no, man. No, right? Probably. He, I'm no. sure he's playing a, a, I think a hollow he, body guitar. Yeah, I, right. I feel like he's like playing a mandolin <laughs> or something, something. But I don't think he sings in that yeah. movie. Yeah. Wait, does he sing in Into the Woods? He's in Into the He's the Is wolf he? in Into the Woods, but I don't know if the does. wolf has a song. James Corden sings it. They, they all they sing in that one, but I don't know. If, I think the wolf is like the one guy who maybe doesn't sing. I don't remember. Yeah, you, you, all right, Sondheim fans are fuming right now. They're furious at us. Keep going. The Sad Hatter. A candy cane. Saruman the Whitening. Mm. Senile Joe. Cabin Boy, Das Bloat, Anytime I, can Bay. Cabin Boy. I came here to kick ass and chew bubble gum, and I still have my bubble gum. Screen Junkie, How Hollywood Saved Money Before AI, and Helena Bonham Cabbage. <laughs> the Hunger Games. A lot of cabbage stuff. My cabbages! <laughs> Oh, I forgot. We're making a YouTube video with Johnny Depp in it. By law, I'm required to add Amber Herbie Score. <laughs> Tears React Challenge. Or they yep. won't put it in your recommendations. Yep, that's the way it goes. Um, yeah. Hate clicks. That's what YouTube's all about. Bring them on, folks. <laughs> click, click away. All right. He, that... We sure showed her. Yeah. Um, she, she's miserable right now. Yeah. Oh, um, no. We're, we're pivoting to drama YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> this is now a four-hour drama video. Uh, all right. Thank you guys for watching. Um, like and subscribe and hit the bell. We we made a real lawyer look at uh, Willy Wonka and talk about the different <laughs> yeah. OSHA violations. Wow, and, yeah. Uh, the liability that he'd be um, up for and whether the Oompa Loompas qualify for internships and stuff like that so definitely you can't tell your workers to take a kid to the taffy pulling room and put him in the machine That's no 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 be, no you're gonna you're on the hook for that <laughs> so yeah coming check, out looking like slender man check that out also on this channel um and i think for this one we probably have some uh silly names that we didn't put in there Let's oh see I'm, I'm i came up with some for Guaranteed. sure Starring Fix All, Depp's second mysterious chocolate lover. <laughs> You're a rabbit anti dentite. <laughs> Dr. Christopher Lee, DS. Sorry for your flaws. In charge of Charles, Cabbage Patch Kid. He called this <laughs> no. Group emoji. Dooter. Thank Heavy you. Waste. Thank you for doing the Billy Treat Patch. yourself. <laughs> the salt in our stars. You're turning violent, Violet. One chew over the blue goose nest, peak TV, Depp fakes, and the bucket sis, fear factory, I like the it. nightmare okay. before Chalkmas, locked, chalked, and true kids in peril. Almost. It's very clever. So Tim Burton casts his wife as an ape, a witch, a corpse, <laughs> two filthy women with disgusting cooking, and an evil, cruel tyrant with a giant head. Really shocked it didn't work out for those two. Yeah. <laughs> nice. No, uh, romance. Yeah. Right? Um, all right. Thank you so much for watching. Let's get into these questions. Uh, Trevor Reese asks, has there ever been a second adaptation that surpassed the first one? Dune comes to mind. Well, yeah, okay. I prefer Villeneuve's Dune to Dave Lynch. I do Lynch, too, but, but I, they both have their... There's a lot of value to they both. both. They both have their yeah. positives. I, th it's happened a few times, I think, where remakes have sort of eventually surpassed the, the First remake. The second so. has the second remake oh. surpassed. So it, I guess the, the second adaptation. So like two people are adapting the same source material. Right. But I mean like Maltese Falcon, the one we all know, is actually the second movie that was made out of that. Oh, okay. Then yeah, the thing. And like right? Alice in Wonderland, there was a version before Disney. Sure. So like that. You know, yeah. so like it has it has happened throughout, you know, film history yep. a bunch of times, but um, Pat McGonagall asks, apart from Willy Wonka, what's your favorite doll adaptation? So mm, Oh, I really which, like which ones do you uh, like? I really like that that old school The Witches, the the nineteen ninety uh, Nicholas Witches Rogue one. The yep. Witches with Angelica Houston. Not the new Zemeckis one with Anne Hathaway. That one's bad. The oh, Angelica like, uh, Houston one from nineteen ninety. I like Fantastic Mr. Fox. That's a Oh yeah, I do. I love the Wes Anderson Fantastic Mr. Fox also. Um, and the the nineties Matilda that Dandy DeVito did is really good too, with Mara Wilson. Nice. Um Ben Zaiten, did you guys see the far superior and charming Julie Binoche movie Chuck a lot? Thoughts? See, I've seen Chocolat. This is an era where I did see not just this movie, but I saw Chocolat incredibly high. So, <laughs> I, you know, I might, 
I might have also been 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 high for chocolat. Yeah. And I found it sumptuous. But mm, I found yeah. it. I, I wanted to uh, have some chocolate after that. That was in the era when Miramax was. You know, they would go to festivals every year and they would pick up a slate of movies, and then those movies would always sort of guaranteed get nominated for Oscars because Harvey Weinstein. We did. Sure. We, we didn't all know. Uh, he was he was running these incredibly effective campaigns every year. So when the Miramax movies would come out, if you were like a movie fan and you followed the Oscars, it was like, well, I got to go see it because it's going to be nominated for like eight things, whether yeah. it's good or bad. So, yeah, we all saw Chocola movie. I wouldn't have ordinarily been that interested. <laughs> uh, Ron asks, if this Willy Wonka was indeed inspired by Michael Jackson, which singer inspired Wonka would you like to see next? David Bowie, Bob Dylan, Axl Rose? Ooh, wow. Interesting. Yeah. Um, you <laughs> would make like because I think that it would really capture like the gruff mean like why is this guy spending all his time with children would Tom be Lights. like uh, uh, that's a good one too I was gonna say a Lou Reed a Lou, Lou Reed, Reed really <laughs> wants uh, yeah I'm waiting for my just Lou like Gitt. a just like a withering <laughs> junky mean a chocolate junkie mean yeah. mean junky Wonka I like yeah. that one yeah I was gonna say um what's his name John Popper. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's a big harmonica yeah, solo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or like, um, what's it's like like kind one? of a distracted hippie Wonka. Well, I was gonna say, what's like... one of those like techno Burning Man hippies, like like bass nectar or something like that, <laughs> <laughs> or marshmallow? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The chocolate drop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Let's see. Um, so a, a lot of questions about from Jonathan Peck and Arthur Mingo um, about the uh, book and faithfulness to the book. I did read the book, but I was a kid, and I don't, yeah, I don't remember what like happened. Like so long ago, and I there's a there's a, the the Charlie and the Great Glass Elevator right. follow up, which Why I read no too, where that? they go to because they like they go to space. I mean, it's pretty okay. crazy. Well, it doesn't it doesn't it's not Wonkaverse. Think big. Yeah, I mean, Netflix is probably thinking about how to do all this because they own all of it now, and, and they know. do. Oh, they, yeah, they the bought Dahl Netflix State. bought the Roald Dahl story company, so they literally own. That's why, like Wes Anderson, he didn't want to work with Netflix particularly, yeah. but he had to go there to do those short story adaptations. Gotcha. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I'm sure they're thinking now about how to do an interwoven Wonkaverse, yeah, or Dahlverse <laughs> after credit scene. It's just the shadow of a giant peach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, l- dun, you're dun, joking, dun. but I'm sure they're thinking about how oh, to well. do this right now. Uh, you know, we're thinking about. Next week, mm. and next week's on its trailer, which is—I mean, it's not even a movie, so you're not going to guess it. We're doing—we're uh, look—we're taking a look at the whole year, like year in it's review. It's a year in review because it's been wow. Yeah. What a year it's been! Strikes. What a year it's been, folks. <laughs> at the theaters. Uh, David Zaslav nu- nuking content half from orbit. The movies. Um, yeah. So a lot going on. We want—we want a chance to talk. Uh, take a step back and talk about um, film and TV in general. So. And like you know, stuff we like that maybe won't get as much attention that's just right like that we get to highlight see godzilla minus one yet you we, know? we write the show yeah so. um so that'll be our fun uh wrap up and then we'll be on holiday break and we'll see you uh, in the new year after that but we will be back next week so thanks so much for watching once again on australia commentaries bye-bye